Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and today what I want to do is do an array masterclass. So basically everything about arrays. Okay, um, first let's just talk about what is an array. An array is just a collection of values that are in a particular order. So, so basically, and then it doesn't have to be the same type of value. So unlike other languages, you don't have to specify how many items are in the array or what type those items are. They can be as many as you want of any type. So simplest thing to think of is just this one two three four five six so it's a collection of six values and this is always going to be the first this is the first item second item third item fourth item seventh um, and the way it works is that this is going to be index zero okay so this is an array but array is really particularly useful if you assign it to a variable so you would just be like const my array equals one, two, three, four. Now, if I want to access an item in the array, so I will just log it real quick. All you have to do is type in my r square brackets and then the index of the array. Again, the first item is zero, so it's a zero, one, two, three. So if I put in zero, so I'm asking, I'm accessing the zero index on my array. Save. One. Okay, so that's pretty much how that works. And again, it doesn't have to be a number. Um, I could do, let's say, I created a variable with a number inside of it. Const two equals two, and then put that in there. That works too. So it'll look for index two, which is zero, one, two. which is value three, or I could even do an expression. So if I were to put in here, say two plus one, oh, two plus one equals three, so it's gonna access index three, zero, one, two, three. So that's the four value, so let me save that. And that's value four. Okie dokie. So that's, that's the basic use of a, an array. But there's multiple ways to create an array. Now, this is this is one way, and it's probably the easier way to create an array. But I could also do this. This is sort of the old way to do it. New array. And I could just do one, two, three, four. And you still end up with the same results. So if I were to just console log the whole array, so I can console log the whole thing, See, it's still the same thing. Doot. One, two, three, four. Okay, so those are the two ways you can create a new array. Because at the end of the day, an array is just a type of object that you can create in JavaScript partic that's built into JavaScript. And any object in JavaScript can be created new with the new keyword. Okay, so essentially you're creating a new object called array or a new object with the array prototype, which that's all that's doing. Neat. Okay, um, there's other fun things you can do with the array. And again, an array can have anything inside of it. So let's see here, I can have a number. I can have a string. I can have another array. I could have an object inside of it. I could have a function inside of it. Okay, so you see that this is an array with pretty much every kind of value inside of it. And if I were the console log that array, you can see that it has everything inside of it. Oh, by bear, Alex is not defined. Oh, this has got to be a string. There we go. You can see it's an array with, and this is zero, one, two, three, four. Each item is always separated by a comma. Okay. 
So let's actually try accessing these different values. So if I want to access the one, that's going to be zero. So if I hit save and run it, see I get one. Now if I access index one, that would be cheese. So I hit save, I get cheese. The, th the next value is I am um, two, that's an array. So you see, if I do that, I want to get the array. But what if I only want to get one of those values in the array? This is called a, n a nested or multi-dimensional array. So then what I have to do is put another square bracket and then say 0, 1. So if I want to access 1, I want to access the 0 index of the array that's located in the second index of my R. So I hit save. And see, there's that 1 that was inside this array. Neat. Now if I go to the third item, that's the object. So I log that, see I get the object with the property Alex. Now if I just want to access that property, I just do dot name. Because it's an object. Doop. There you go, Alex. And then the next property after that is a function. Okay, so if I go to index four, this is a function. To use a function, I just add the parentheses to invoke the function that's stored in that spot. And see, it works. I work, because the console logs I work. The reason it shows undefined is because the function doesn't return a value, so it's like, uh, it didn't return anything. But yeah, see, you can have you can store anything inside of an array, making it super super powerful. Neat. Okay, other cool things about arrays. Um, next, let's talk about combining arrays. Const um, my array one equals one. To const my r two equals three four. So these are two different arrays, and I want to combine them. The problem is, if I were to just do this, let's show you a couple different things. Now most people would kind of try to do something like this: my r three equals, and then it'll create a new array and do my r1 and my r2 and the result is oh nope the result is you get this save err save and if i were just to console log my array 3 to see what the combined array looks like See, I don't get one array with both arrays combined. I get the two arrays as an array. So it's an array of arrays, array one, array two, all wrapped up in array three. Not what I wanted. So let's explore different possibilities. Let's see, can I just add them together? Let's give that a shot. My array one plus my r2 equals my r3. Let's see if that works. Nope, that just basically turned them into strings and concatenated them. So that's not going to work. So there's a function called in arrays called concat. So I could do my r1. I think it's dot concat my r2. So basically what it's going to do is just conjoin these two arrays. Pretty sure that's the syntax for that. Let me just double check. Yep. So see, there you go. You have a com combined array. Or you could do this. Just create a new array and use a spread operator. My r1 dot 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 my r2. And what this does, it spreads the array. So that way, instead of it being an array inside the array, it's just putting the 1 and the 2, and then this is putting the 
3 and the 4 into the array. This is my preferred method. And see, same thing. You've now combined the arrays. Neat. Okay, now for uh, destructuring. Do, 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 an array. So let's say I want to, so let's say like for some reason, uh, just, let's just keep this one and two. I want to store those in a separate variable. I can do this, const. I use the square brackets to show that I'm, this is a, this is on JavaScript. I'm going to break down an array. I want to break down an array, not into an array. I basically want to break into pieces. That's why it's called destructuring. And I would just do one, two, equals, One, two, equals, and then you put the array there, my r1. And the result is, basically, it's going to go look in here and say, hey, look, there's this array with one and two. According to the syntax you just gave me, you want me to break into pieces, so we break it to one and two, assign one to one, and two to two, because that's the order that they're in. So now if I were to console log those variables separately, Ta-da! Okay, so now those variables are actually two separate variables. Neat. Okay, so we've already covered a whole bunch of stuff, and there's even more stuff you can do with arrays. Arrays are super powerful. You could loop over an array, so let's talk about that. So let's just put a couple more things in here. Three, four. Now, if I want to loop over array, I could use for loops. I mean, you could use really any kind of loop. I'm not going to bother with the while loop. Um, I really only use while loops if I need an infinite loop. <coughs> but first way, we can do it with a for loop, a standard for loop. So that could be like, I'll just use the word index for my number. So index equals zero. Long as the index is less than. And any, every array has a property called length which is pretty useful. I'm going to change this back to just my r. My array dot length that counts how many items. So the, the prop, the my r prop, this length property would be four because there's four items in this array, but the highest index is three because it's zero, one, two, three. So long as it's less than four, it's going to run this loop. And then each time we're going to increment index. In this loop, we'll just do whatever I want each time. And I can just use that index variable to iterate. So I'll say, I want to console log my array. And I want to console log whatever value is at the index of index. Because the first time it's zero, so it would be console log one. Then after the first loop becomes, um, it becomes one. So it'd be then two, then three, then four. You guys get the idea. So if I say, well, first let me get rid of this line. So if I get rid of that, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, I also could just do this. For value of my, oh no, no, we already have for that. So it's for value, and again, you could put whatever name here, value of my R. So it's really just variable name for each item of your array. And you can name the item whatever you want. So it's going to go through my array. And then each time I loop, whatever the value is, in this case, first time one, becomes value. So then I just change this to just console log the value. One, two, three, four. OK. Also. My arrays have a built-in loop. Actually, they have several built-in loops. But the main one that just works kind of like what you just saw is called for each. So for each item in the array. And what it does, it takes back, it takes a function. So I'll show it to you in two different ways. Cons, we'll call this my loop function. So this is the function that I'm going to use to loop over the array. And what it does, it takes two parameters, you only have to really put in the first one. The first one's always the value on each loop. So one, two, three, four. And then secondly, you can put in the index. 
So basically if you put that variable in there, so then it'll be like, okay, the value of the array, one, and then the index, zero, on each loop. And then you can do whatever you want on each loop. So I'm just gonna console.log the value, then the index. So you can see it gives you both values. And then I can just put that here. So what, what it does is that it's just gonna execute this function for each one of these. So on the first time, for the first item, it says, okay, the value is one, the index is zero, do the function. Then it goes to two and says, okay, two is the value, zero, uh, one's the index, do the function. This is what's referred to as a callback. I'm passing a function as a parameter. Let's see, uh, value then index, value then index, value then index, value then index. Neat. Now, I could just keep writing my function separately like this and then just plopping it in like that, but a lot of times you're only using the function once. So what a lot of people will do is they'll just do, do this. Okay, I would just actually just take the actual function, instead of storing the function in a variable, just plop the function as the parameter. And there you go. And this would also work. I just don't need the semicolon here. Okay. Yeah, or this, that semicolon can stay. But this would also work. It's the same thing. It's just, I'm pat instead of defining the function inside of a variable, I'm just passing the raw function in there without any kind of giving it any kind of name, because I'm never using it again. And see, works. Cool. Okay. So that's looping over arrays. There's a bunch of other really useful uh, functions. So if, let's say you want to deal with the end of the array. So I want to remove or add something. There's push and pop. So if I did my r dot push five, that'll add five to the end of the array. If I do my r dot pop, that's going to remove one, I mean remove well, it'll end up removing five. So let me just do that first. Control X. So this will end up removing four because it removes whatever's at the end of the array. And this will end up pushing five onto that spot. Now, if I'm dealing with the front of the array, it's called my R dot shift will remove one and my r dot unshift will add zero. Okay, so zero get will get plopped on the front of the array. Save. Okay, syntax errors. See, my R done shift is not a function. Oh, it's, it's just all lowercase. Unshift. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't do anything. Oh, I didn't console like anything. So it did the thing, just didn't show me anything. My R. So you'll see the array has changed. We'll have removed four and replaced it with five, and we'll have removed one and replaced it with zero. See, so now it's zero, two, three, five. So again, push and pop is for dealing with the end of the array. Shift and unshift is for dealing with the front of the array. Now let's say I wanna create a mini array. I don't, I wanna keep my one, two, three, four array, but I want sort of just uh, two and three as a separate array. I can do const second second, I'm just call it second, um, and use my r dot slice. Slice creates a smaller version of the array. And the way it works is I'm saying, where do I want to start? I want to start at index one, because I want two. And I don't, I want three, I don't want four. 
So three is index two, but with the way this works, it cuts up to, but not including the other index. So then I'm gonna put index three here. So it's gonna cut, start at one and keep going till it hit index three, but doesn't take index three. So you'll notice in this situation, I'm gonna make a copy of two and three into a separate array, but this bigger array is still intact. So I'm gonna console log both arrays. See, big array is still intact, small array is still, I now created this smaller array as a slice of that bigger array. Now if I use splice on the other hand, the way that works, if I did the same thing, it would be I want to take out this thing in index one, and if I just want two and three, I'm gonna put two here, because the two represents how many things I wanna take out. So I wanna take out one, two things. So if I save that, splice actually does pull it out of the array. So the old array will be missing two and three, which will be have been moved into a separate array. Okay, see, doesn't have two and three anymore. Instead, the two and three is located in this new array. So splice actually will pull stuff out of the array while one and four does not. Cool. And then there's my R, well, what other functions are there? Um, there's a lot of array functions. There's index of. So if I want to figure out what the, so we'll call this index. If I want to know what the index of two is, I just type in index of two. It's going to look in the array for the first time the value of two shows up and say, oh, okay, that's index one, return one, and we will console log index. Let's run that and see, returns index of one because the two value is located in index one. Cool. And let's say you don't know what value you're looking for. You just want you just know, let's say you want to find the first number above two, you can use find. And this also takes a function. So there's a lot of these, it's called callback higher order array functions. So, and most of these, what they do is they just take like a, a, a function that re returns true or false. So once again, just like all of these value, I could do index. So I could be like value index, arrow function, and I just return whatever my test is. I could just do a whole complicated function if I wanted to, but to keep it simple, I'm just gonna return, you know, is the value less a uh, greater than two. So it's gonna go to each one of these and say, is this greater than two? No. Is this greater than two? No. Is this greater than two? Yes, return that value. And it's gonna return me three. So it's kind of a way to search your array, but only finds you the first value. See, and found if it brings me back three, finds me the value. But what if I wanted the index of that value? Then I just do same thing, but find index. And there you go. So you found me the index, which is two, is the index of three, because it's zero, one, two. And let's see if I want to, other thing I can do is I can do dot sum. So what sum is saying is, does at least one of the values pass the test? So as long as one value passes the test, this is going to return true, which is like, let's say I want to just make sure that like, there's one, we're, we're going to go on, a trip and I want to make sure there's one person in the class who's part of the trip going group that is able to do CPR. I might have like a array of objects that also that as a property shows do they know CPR and I'll just go through each one and say return does a CPR does CPR equal true and long as it returns true for one of them then we're gonna be like okay we're good to go on the trip. That's sort of where you would use sum. Well you'll see like it's gonna return true now. See, true, because first it goes, is this greater than two? No, is this greater than two? No, this is greater than two? Yes, we're good. 
Now let's say I said everybody in class needs to know CPR. Then I would use every, which does the opposite. It says if one of them doesn't pass the test, then you fail. So if one person doesn't know CPR, we're not going on the trip. So this is going to end up returning false because the very first one pa fails the test. Already not greater than two, we're done, move on. All of them have to pass the test which is this, returning the value greater than 2. If that doesn't resolve as true, then they failed the test. So that's false. Now, two of my favorite functions in arrays are filter and map. So let's talk about filter and map, because they are amazing. Um, and what they do is they give you back new arrays. So let's say I want an array that only has the values greater than two. So it does the same thing. It's gonna run a test on each item, but it's only gonna give you an array with the items that pass the test. So it's gonna be like, not greater than two, not greater than two, greater than two, greater than two. So I'm gonna get a new array with just three and four. Because again, it's all taking that function. So I'm just pushing, passing a function as a parameter here. That's all I'm doing. Okay, I could, like like you saw earlier, I could write the function separately and then just pass in the function. Uh, but this is a more typical way of doing it. Okay, but if I hit that, see? Only two things passed the test, so I filtered out only the values I wanted. Now map, on the other hand, loops over an array and allows you to do whatever you want. And at the end of your function, just return a value. And whatever value you return, goes inside the new array. And it could literally be anything. So I could do something really stupid and just return one. So what's gonna happen is that it doesn't even look at the value. It'll just be like, okay, I looped over one, I'm gonna return one. I'm gonna loop over two, I'm gonna return one. I'm gonna loop over three, I'm gonna return one. I'm gonna loop over four, I'm gonna return one. And because of that, I'm gonna end up having a, an array of ones, which is silly. See, so it just gave me back an array because I said each time you loop, return one. And it makes an array of all those return values. What's more interesting is to actually play with the value. So I do something like, we'll take whatever the value of the array is right now, multiply it by five, then divide it by two. So the first time it's one, so five, one times five is five, divided by two would be 2.5. This times five is 10 divided by two will be five. This times three is 15 divided by two would be 7.5 and this would be 20 and 10. So you get an you should get in the an array with those particular values because that's the result. And there you go, see 2.55, 7.5, 10. Because each loop is just gonna run the function against that value and whatever the function returns goes in the array. This can be really powerful. Because maybe I have an array of like students that just graduated, and I want to go change all their statuses to graduate. So what I can do is do map, um, and basically change their status to graduate one by one. Just have the function return a new version of that student object with with the graduation property changed. Okay. Um, and then you can even compound these, okay? But then it gets, that's what you start ending up in what's called callback hell when you have too many callbacks inside of each other. But I'm not gonna quite go there right now. And I think that's a pretty thorough um, going on, going on of array. So that's the array masterclass. I think that you, you kind of know pretty much everything or all the stuff that you should know about arrays by getting into some like super, super crazy stuff. So enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day and enjoy.